All right, back again on the Fantasy Football Podcast after a little bit of a uh, delay. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was a, a good thing because now we've got a little bit bigger of a sample size. I think that was part of the issue uh, with the podcast I did earlier in the year. Uh, there wasn't really too much to analyze. Obviously, there's the draft, but there's not really any meat. It's pretty much all speculation. Um, I remember I actually did a pre-draft podcast a couple years ago where it was all speculation on who different people would draft based on previous success, and that just strikes me as an awful idea. So, uh, you know, now we're, we're into the season a little bit. Week two is in the books. Uh, some of the teams are starting to separate. Um, I know myself, I am uh, 4-0 uh, at the top of the Lane Bryant division. Bootsy's team is strong at 3-1. and um, There's also some other contenders that, uh, despite their records, are, are uh, high in points. Denenberg uh, and Billy Chief among them, and Brian Deutsch looking to be a strong contender as well. So, obviously, a lot of fantasy less to be played. Um, thought I would kind of break into uh, just some of the topics going on in the league. So, uh, first and foremost, the biggest uh, uh, news item, uh, the curse of Kraus. Um, it's been well documented over the last few days, especially, uh, you know, started early last week with the Ray Rice news, uh, but really kind of kicked into overdrive uh, on Thursday with the Adrian Peterson child abuse news coming out. Uh, and then uh, on Sunday, we were all uh, glorious spectators to uh, RG3 getting injured, Noshan Moreno getting injured, uh, Des Bryant went down for a short period of time, although he did come back and have a good game, uh, and Deshaun Jackson uh, got injured as well. So, um, you know, obviously, Kraus for years has, uh, you know, bemoaned his, his bad luck and made sure that we all knew about uh, the, the, the bad injuries that he had suffered, and we would always kind of take our time to point out that we all suffer injuries and it's fantasy and it's no big deal. Um, but, you know, even the uh, most cynical among us uh, would have to kind of admit uh, that Krauss has obviously fallen under the, the specter of some bad luck. It's really, it almost seems kind of supernatural. It's, it's pretty spooky. Um, you know, that it's almost like to a man, every single guy on his team has gotten targeted um, with some sort of malady. So, you know, just a couple of predictions on what might happen next. Um, you know, Percy Harvin, I think, might get caught uh, with a, a money counterfeiting ring um, uh, using a theme park as a front like Beverly Hills Cop 3. Um, I think Tom Brady and Kirk Cousins are going to announce a joint retirement and open up a, 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 a franchise chain of bakeries. Um, and then new waiver ad Brian Quick uh, is going to be diagnosed with leprosy. All right. Uh, number two topic uh, of, of the week um, there have been a lot of trades, and this one is kind of synonymous with the, with the first topic, just being that Kraus is uh, you know the major player with these trades. He, um, I think, has seen the writing on the wall and has divested of some of his higher value players. Um, today, he sold Jimmy Graham to Smith for 55 auction, uh, and Jason Witten as a consolation prize. Um, I do, I think it's a good deal for Smith. I don't know if it's enough to catch Bootsy. Smith is one and three right now, um, but you know Jimmy Graham obviously just caught two touchdowns last week. The guy could go off for two three touchdowns in any game. Um, he's a monster, and I think 55 is a good price. I mean, you know, I, hell, I would have paid 55 for Jimmy Graham, um, but, you know, I was uh, still uh, brushing my teeth and in the shower when Krause completed this deal. Um, so, you know, I think it's a good deal. It'll be interesting to see if it's enough to help Smith. Uh, the other big deal, uh, actually this one went down even before that, was uh, Jason Plotsker getting Adrian Peterson, the child beater himself, and Des Bryant for 62 auction. Um, you know, this is now marks probably the fourth or fifth time that Plotsker has sold out and bought back in and then sold out again and then bought back in um, of any given season. So I'm not really sure what, you know, this this constitutes. I think it's obviously him if, trying to make a run, um, seeing that Krause has given up in the season. Oaks obviously gave up in the season before it even started. Uh, so, you know, he is uh, making a run at uh, my, uh, you know, attempt to win the Lane Bryant division. So um, obviously, you know, Des Bryant is top three receiver he's great so 62 auction for him is nothing too crazy um i think adrian peterson you know obviously no one knows what's going to happen with this uh with this case with him he was placed on this special list um and he might be out for a long time so who knows i mean he might be out a long time or you know they they 
you go to court and the court finds that it's no big deal and you know not the end of the world and they put them on you know they send them to anger management or whatever and then the Vikings reinstate them in like week you know five or six and then Plotsker has you know one of the top three running backs in fantasy for the last half of the season um, if you look at it that way and he gets Des Bryant I think 62 is a steal if you look at just Des for 62 um, you know obviously it's not anything crazy but it also means that Plotsker's in the hole for next year and he better win this year um, which kind of brings me to uh, my next topic, topic number three, which would be myself and Bootsy as title favorites. Um, you know, if Foster, if that's the plan to win this year, um, you know, he does have his work cut out for him. And I was, as I have said in the past, trying to walk the line uh, of self-promotion, but I do think that my team is a title favorite. Um, I'm not quite top in points scored, but I'm towards the top. I'm 4-0. and I'm the only 4-0 and team. Um, I've, uh, you know, haven't really had that many close matchups. I needed to come from behind uh, with T.Y. Hilton to beat Plosker on Monday night, but other than that my other three victories have been kind of walkovers uh, my team is definitely weak at wide receiver obviously that's sort of my big uh, gap you know Victor Cruz is terrible and Marcus Colston is you know he's a lotto ticket basically one week he might be fine and the, the next week he scores zero uh, Cordero Patterson I like a lot but with Matt Castle throwing the ball he's not really um, you know can't be relied on as a number one wide receiver I just picked up James Jones who I think could be pretty solid uh, you know just because the Raiders are so shitty uh, they're gonna be throwing all the time and he's definitely the best receiver on the team so you know hopefully I've got hope uh, there obviously I would have been in better shape if I didn't uh, give Mike Wallace away for John Dwyer um, you know in my mind it kind of made sense Wallace you know had a little bit of value I didn't need him because I still thought Vic Cruz and T.Y. and Patterson would all be good uh, instead of like the C-level receivers that they are so I gave Wallace to Ariel uh, for Jonathan Dwyer which you know it w- was not a crazy move I needed a handcuff Andre Ellington with this injury news um, but now you know just as I had just sent out an email and as I'm just hearing on the radio right now John Dwyer um, had picked just about the worst possible time uh, to um, strike his wife in the face and it has gotten arrested for that and you know with the with the the climate being how it is um, you know he might be like done for the year who the hell knows so uh, obviously that trade didn't work out so well for me I could definitely use Mike Wallace he seems to have kind of shaken off last year he's more of like a wide receiver one he's a top 15 guy and I'm kind of screwed without him um, Bootsy's team is strong as well he's three and one his, his one loss I think was pretty close um, his weakness is wide receiver or I'm sorry not wide receiver his weakness is quarterback uh, he's got Romo and Flacco as the starters. I am. I have heard a couple of rumors about Romo, you know, being injured and missing practice. He obviously, um, you know, had to sit out of the Cowboys' really important game last year uh, because of a back injury, and so that's something that might linger. I know he had surgery in the off season. Um, Flacco has been a little bit better this year. He's got uh, Gary Kubiak out there as the offensive coordinator, um, you know, which was a bit of a change from what they were doing last year. So he's, you know, been a little improved. He's got Steve Smith, which is important. That's kind of like that Anquan Bolden sort of like receiver. Um, and then he's got Carson Palmer, boots he does on his bench. Palmer has some kind of weird nerve thing and his shoulder. Um, so, I mean, you know, on paper, those quarterbacks are fine, but it, it kind of remains to be seen if they're enough to get him over the hump. Um, but, you know, his team looks strong. So, and then I mentioned, obviously, there's a couple of other contenders. I would, however, point to me and Bootsy as the early favorites. Uh, all right, next up, uh, looking at just fab pickups. There were some big fab pickups over the last couple of weeks, three of which I want to point out. Uh, well, I should say two of which I want to point out as being just mind-bogglingly dumb, and uh, one of which, which, you know, I think is a bit of a waste, but not that big of a deal. Uh, the first being uh, Oaks dropping $67 on Justin Forsett. Um, you know, I, it had been announced, I think, that Pierce was going to start. Uh, Forsett has had a long career in the NFL and has really done nothing with it. He was uh, in Seattle for a long time. I think he even played beyond Sean Alexander, like, as a rookie. He, he's been in the league for a long time and has never really done anything of note, uh, you know, especially in that Baltimore offense. He's He doesn't really fit the scheme. So I don't know why Oaks thought it would be necessary to drop that much cash on him. I guess he was desperate for a starting running back. Um, Forsett is uh, not that. The other one uh, I want to call out is Kraus dropping $76 on Sean Hill. I realize this is earlier in the year. Um, not too early in the year. It was only about a week, you know, two weeks ago. But this is when Bradford went down. Sean Hill had been uh, installed as the starter. Um, Kraus was relying on Sam Bradford as a starting quarterback, which I guess was kind of his first problem. Um, this seemed like a really high bid on Sean Hill. I suppose he wanted a guarantee that he got him. Uh, but now Sean Hill, you know, goes out with an injury. You can't really predict that. Oh, you know, I didn't even mention that earlier in the curse of Kraus. But, yeah, Sean Hill definitely got uh, struck down by the curse of Kraus. So, way to go. Uh, but, yeah, so Sean Hill's out uh, 
uh, now who knows uh, for how long, and Kraus is out $76.00. The third one was Plasker dropping $21.00 on Kyle Rudolph. Um, you know, I, it's not that crazy. It's not absurd. It's not like 21 is that big of a deal. Uh, just Kyle Rudolph, I, I don't know. He, he, he's like the ultimate prick tease. He's just like every year they're like, oh, this is the year Kyle Rudolph is going to be good. And it's not like he hasn't played with Matt Castle before. He just, you know, Kyle Rudolph, he just kind of sucks. Um, I would call out two uh, that I that I saw go down, I think actually just this morning, um, that I would be very complimentary of. One is Denenberg picking up uh, that big, tall, lanky guy, Larry Donnell, on the Giants for $4. The Giants have been terrible. Uh, Eli Manning has just been god-awful. But this guy, Larry Donnell, has come out of nowhere, and Eli throws him, you know, he, he gets like 10 targets a game. This guy is like, you know, Eli's go-to. So, you know, I, I think that was a steal, um, especially if it were if we had any kind of PPR or anything. The guy would be uh, a really good pickup. But even still, he's a red zone guy. They go to him on fourth down. He's, you know, a good player. So four bucks is definitely a good good deal. Uh, the other one being Kraus picking up uh, Brian Quick for just two dollars. He's a receiver on St. Louis for the last couple of years. He's just uh, you know uh, now he's basically all they have, uh, and so he catches a lot of balls as well. Um, although as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's only uh, a matter of time until his skin starts falling off. Um, all right, last topic before we crack open the old mailbag, which is uh, uh, distinctly light this week. Um, I'm going to uh, address the uh, Plots cast, the uh, Jason Plotsker created uh, podcast that we were all subjected to uh, about a week ago. I, you know, when I first uh, caught wind of this and first, uh, you know, uh, saw that this had been released, I was offended, uh, but then about 30 seconds in, as I would imagine the rest of us felt, uh, really I just kind of felt that need to shower, um, you know, just sort of felt a little dirty listening to it. Um, the first declarative statement on the podcast uh, is that Kraus has the best team, so you could tell that things were off to a bad start. Uh, there was some strange Carlos Hyde, that 70s show attempted a joke then there was the gay cowboys and some other half-hearted attempts at 13 year old boy humor um you know really it just kind of beyond the, the the poor editing and the real lack of substance um you know honestly it was just a horrifying look into the mind of jason plotsker which i don't think any of us should be subjected to so uh you know that's our I, i'm glad it was uh I don't, I don't really have anything else to say about that. Um, all right. Uh, crack up in the old mailbag. Uh, only one submission this week. It comes from Andrew Denenberg. Uh, he says, who had a faster fall from grace? Was it Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, Krause's fantasy team, or O.J. Simpson? Um, you know, I think O.J. is innocent, so he has not experienced the fall from grace, if you ask me. Uh, Adrian Peterson, I think, has always been kind of a dirtbag. Um, that's the question. I emailed this out, and this is, you know, just something I, I want to know is, you know, how come no one is shining any sort of negative light on just the sheer number of kids that he has? Um, he, you know, he's got like four or five kids at least. I think it's like higher than that. I think it's six or seven. I think they're all from different women. They all live in different parts of the country. It's not like, I don't think any of them live in Minnesota with him. So it's not like he's really caring for them other than beating their ass with with a piece of wood. Um, you know, the one that died uh, last year, he didn't even know about until recently, and I think was living in, like, South Dakota or something like that. So Adrian Peterson just strikes me as kind of a scumbag. Uh, his dad was a miserable piece of shit who went to prison, and, you know, his dad got paroled from prison, and then he couldn't uh, go see... His dad was in prison in Texas, which is where they're from, and he got out, and it was some big to-do, and he was like, all right, I'm going to see my, my boy play football at the University of Oklahoma, and then couldn't go, uh, you know, to, to a game for a couple of weeks because all the games were in the state of Oklahoma, uh, and this guy couldn't leave the state of Texas because he's a, he's a dirtbag, just like his stupid son. So, you know, I, I don't think it's a fall from grace if you were never in grace. Uh, Krause's team fell a long time ago, if you ask me. Honestly, it probably had to be Ray Rice. I mean, if you look at Ray Rice, this is a guy who, you know, in college was, you know, the short little dude from Rutgers. He was a beast. Everyone liked him. Then he was a high draft pick. Then he was, you know, a great, you know, top five, top three running back in fantasy uh, for the Ravens. He was, you know, he had that big run against the Patriots on the first carry of the game, that playoff game. He was a, you know, integra he, he picked up that, uh, uh, you know, fourth and 27 or whatever against the Chargers when they won the Super Bowl. And that was like the big thing that sprung him to the Super Bowl run. And he played well. And, uh, you know, it was great. And then comes back last year uh, and just sucked. So we all got, we got to be, you know, uh, uh, we had to suffer through a season of just watching him be bad at football. And then as if that wasn't enough, 
Um, you know, now he punches out his wife in an elevator and just, you know, the, the, that's, uh, you know, pretty much the definition of a fall from grace is we used to love the guy and now we all know what a miserable, uh, miserable piece of shit he is. So, uh, that's pretty much it for the podcast. Uh, I am currently on uh, I-94, headed back from work, so I'm surprised I haven't gotten any sort of automobile accident quite yet. Um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll tr- I'll try and stay uh, consistent with the podcast weekly, um, but no guarantees. All right, good luck this weekend.